one project doing almost as much as the previous year's uh, investment. And it's putting people to work, it's putting electricians to work, contractors for Moriarty, it's putting the affordable solar guys to work on uh, actually doing the installation, it's putting steel erectors to work, it's putting the folks at Shot Solar who actually manufacture those panels to work. Um, if you've heard some of the news about Shot, one of the problems we have is transmission in this country and we need to get work through some of that. One of the reasons SHOT has pulled back a little bit on their concentrated solar PV is because it takes so long to get through the, that's utility scale and it tends to, to spike in it based on individual applications here in California, in Southern Arizona, Nevada, um, hopefully New Mexico. And they are actually way behind on their orders of PV right now because the things that we did in the Recovery Act dramatically expanded the market for PV, for photovoltaics, for crystal and silicon uh, photovoltaics in this country. Sunco is a manufacturer here in town who used to just make silicon for Intel. They made wafers and they sold them to Intel. Well, because of the Recovery Act, they have been able to add a whole new manufacturing line that is now taking the same silicon that, that they manufacture in Arizona, bringing it over here, and in, in addition to making wafers for the uh, uh, for the computer industry, they're now also making monocrystalline uh, panels or uh, <coughs> cells for solar panels, and they're uh, they're adding jobs within that sector. The most, the single most important policy that needs to happen before the end of this Congress to make that continue, um, and we're probably not going to see the kind of comprehensive bill that I fought so hard for in the House of Representatives, but a national renewable portfolio standard is absolutely critical. New Mexico did one early, and it helped us create jobs here before the rest of the country. We actually got ahead of the curve. We had a competitive advantage because we created our renewable portfolio standard before other states did it. If we had a national one driving demand, it would, uh, and creating some, some long-term predictability, it would continue the growth that we've seen in distributed and installers that oftentimes have 10 or 20 employees. It'll continue the growth that we've seen at, at manufacturers like Sunco and Shot and continue to ramp up this entire industry. That has to get through the Senate before the end of the year. We had 59 votes for it in the previous Senate. We ought to be able to get that done. Uh, a lot of us have spent a lot of capital saying to the folks on the Senate side and, and it's not like our senators are the ones holding it up. They need to bring it for a floor vote because we believe that they're, that we can get the votes, the 60 votes, if they put it on the floor to get it done. And it have a huge impact on wind, too. I mean, if we can get some decent transmission that doesn't, uh, between central New Mexico and Arizona, California, um, there are a, a, a number of um, agreements now in place, leases, just looking for the day when we get transmission here, then being able to develop uh, more wind farms in central New Mexico in Torrance County um, and places like Encino. If you've seen that big wind farm over there in southeastern Torrance County, the High Lonesome uh, Mesa project, it's completely maxed out. In fact, they've dialed back the turbines a little bit because they're dealing with the, the line that P&M put in there for them, that P&M invested on, but it's not enough to grow that. You could have 10, 20, 50 times as much wind generation in that area if the, if the generation, 